Hello, History of Sexuality students. Hope you're all doing well. This is Professor Bowen here with some guidelines, tips, and instructions for the final part of your research projects. It has been a long journey, and now you're at the last step of this project. So what are you supposed to do? What are my expectations for this final submission, and how can you meet them? These are the questions I'm going to talk about in this sh short video, and in getting to them, I first want to clarify what I'm not looking for in this assignment. The name of the game here is revision. For part five of your project, I am not asking you to write a paper. I'm not asking you to annotate more of your sources. I'm not asking you to craft an entirely new proposal. If we had more time to work on this, those would be the logical next steps, but we only have one semester. And besides, my teaching goals for this project have had more to do with creation and design than with implementation or execution. Hopefully, by this point in the semester, I've succeeded in impressing upon you just how much work is required at the very beginning stages of a project. You've certainly done a whole lot of work thus far, and hopefully this has been a valuable learning experience. If you're not convinced of this, let me remind you just how far you've come. You all started with some really big general questions. You wanted to know about changes that spanned many generations, you wanted to know about comparisons across many different parts of the world. You wanted to know about connections between people's past and present. All of these questions were amazing, and they're exactly the kinds of things that professional historians like me are interested in. But in order to get at these huge, complex questions, historians have learned that it's best to begin with something much smaller. For example, a specific text, a singular event, or a particular individual or group. Following in these methodological footsteps, with each step of the research process, you have refined the chronological, geographical, and topical scopes of your research more and more, until finally you have arrived at something specific enough to approach in a concrete, grounded manner you've arrived at a question that can be definitively, conclusively addressed, and at a historical process that can be identified and known. Much of your project's evolution has been guided by your own growing awareness of what other historians have had to say about your topic. And in reading this literature, you've learned something incredibly valuable about the craft of history, about what it is to reconstruct the past. You've learned about the kinds of questions that historians can and can't answer. You've learned about the benefits and the limits of various kinds of historical data. You've learned about how historians go about trying to figure out how and why things change over time, and of the consequences of those changes. In short, you have learned to think like a historian. At the same time, you've equipped yourself with some skills that will be transferable to classes in other departments and programs, whether in the social sciences and humanities or in other fields. Just ask yourself, before you began this research project, did you know just how much work is required in the beginning stages of a project like this? Did you know what a painstaking effort finding relevant scholarship can be? Did you know how much time and effort is required to produce a quality research question? Did you know how to frame your work in a way that engages existing scholarly debates while also trying to further them in a way that makes an original contribution to knowledge? As this is a research university, I wouldn't be surprised if you answered at least some of these questions in the affirmative. At the same time, I hope this class has sharpened your ac academic research skills 
and given you some new research tools. Among other things, you've learned that designing a research project comes about not just through short-term abstract thinking, but through a continual back-and-forth discussion between you and your sources. This is one that does not proceed in a linear fashion. It includes regular trips back to the drawing board. It often requires you to rip things up and start all over again. But no matter how frustrating it is, it's always beneficial because we're always learning, both from the setbacks and from the breakthroughs. We're learning about how to study the world and its peoples, how to ask meaningful, answerable questions, how to approach these questions, and how to acquire and analyze data pertaining to them. And so I hope this process has proved a valuable one for you. The final part of this project is where you showcase everything you've learned so far. Consider it a final opportunity to show me and to also show yourself how much you've grown as a researcher over the course of the last few months. For me, personally, it's been really humbling and incredibly rewarding to watch each of your projects evolve and to see how, with every step of the way, you've gotten better and better at refining and honing your research questions, at discovering sources connected to these, and in deriving insights from these sources that lead to fresh insights and new knowledge. I'm really so incredibly proud of all of you, and I can't wait to see what you produce at the end of the semester. So finish strong, flex those academic muscles, revel in your own abilities, and use them to produce something truly magnificent. Now, to come down off my soapbox a little bit, uh, let me talk about some of the particulars for the final assignment of this research project. So for part five, your goal is to make improvements to each of your previous submissions. That is the proposal, the primary and secondary source bibliographies, and your annotations, and then to package all of these revisions together into a single document that will be delivered for review. Again, as I said, revision is the name of the game here. And also, by the way, if you're wondering, as an American, I'm using the American English definition of the word revision, which means to update or to correct or to make improvements. I'm not using this in the British English sense of the term, where revision means simply to review or to study. I'm talking about corrections, updates, and improvements. That's what I mean by revision. The changes that you make to these documents should reflect the comments that I have provided on initial drafts. In large part, the grade that you receive on part five is going to be based on how effectively you attend to the criticism and suggestions that I've made in my feedback on parts one through four. Failure to improve upon these previous submissions in a manner consistent with my comments will likely result in a grade that's lower than that received on any previous assignment connected with this project, so be sure to make some important changes. While the revisions you undertake here should address the past concerns that I've raised regarding your proposal, your bibliographies, and your annotations, I also have some more general, uh, universally applicable suggestions to share about how to strengthen each part of the project, and these are as follows, starting with the proposal itself. So your final version of this should reflect and take advantage of everything you've learned from your primary and secondary sources. Whereas your initial draft of this was written without much knowledge of the topic you'd chosen to research, you now hopefully have a more firm command of all the literature, or at least some of it. Reading through your sources, you've likely identified some gaps in the existing scholarship, and you doubtless have some ideas about how to fill those gaps. Your discoveries here are worth mentioning. The final version of your proposal should be pitched as a justification for carrying out the project that you have envisioned. So you want to discuss questions like, what have historians already said about your topic? 
How does your research help us advance existing discussions and debates on this? How might the questions that you're asking, the approach that you're taking, or the sources that you're working with result in an original contribution to knowledge on your topic? These are the things I'm looking for you to address with the last version of your proposal. And because doing these things might take some time, or space, I should say, it's okay if your proposal is a bit longer than the one that you started out with. Ideally, I would say that this should be around two to three paragraphs or approximately 450 to 700 words. Now, to the bibliographies. The suggestions that I'm giving here are pretty standard, but just to clarify them anyway, um, I'd like you to replace sources that I flagged as inappropriate or unhelpful. Please fix any errors in your citations. Make sure they are complete. Also, please create separate subheadings for the primary sources and the secondary sources. That is to say, list them separately, not together. And also, as you improve on things, uh, feel free to make changes to your bibliography. What you've got right now is not written in stone. It doesn't have to be the final version. Um, even if I said that sources in the past were okay, you can make changes to them as your research evolves. Lastly, to the annotations. There's a couple of big points I want to make here, and I'll start with the primary source annotations. One thing I'd really like you to do for these is make your primary source annotations talk to your secondary source annotations. Figure out how your primary sources can be used to provide further insights into some of the things that you've learned from the secondary scholarship. Do your primary sources speak to gaps in the scholarship? Are they sources no one's looked at? Do they allow us to look at things from a different angle? Do they help us extend the chronology of your topic backward or forward? And how exactly might they help us do these things? Be precise here. Instead of just saying that these sources help you address your research question in a way that furthers existing debates, tell us specifically how they help you do this. Be sure to engage in the work of analysis here. I'd also like to see lots of analysis in the secondary source annotations. Compose these so that they expand on the points that you made in your proposal. Talk in precise terms about how the scholarship you've selected addresses your research question, your research question, not just the author's research question. And when you do get to the author's research question, Really get in there and critique your author's arguments, their methodologies, their use of evidence, etc. If you see flaws, point them out. If you see unexplored questions or gaps in their research, again, point them out. Even if you see nothing wrong whatsoever in your chosen sources, be sure to give a justification for this viewpoint. In other words, make it clear to the reader why you think their argument is conclusive, convincing, persuasive. Doing this means getting into the evidence, into the primary sources in particular. Show why they so strongly back up what the author is trying to prove. And of course, if you're not convinced, do the same thing. Show us why things don't add up, where the holes are, etc. I really want this to be a critical commentary, not just a summary. All right, that's all I have to say. These are all of my expectations for part five of the research project. I hope that you have found this helpful. Of course, if you have any questions about any of this or would just like some advice about how to revise the various parts of your project, please feel free to ask for help. I'd be happy to meet during office hours or in a separately scheduled appointment. I'm really, really proud of all of the excellent work you've all done on these projects over the course of the semester, and I'm incredibly excited to see how all of these turn out. Finish strong. All right, and with that, I will conclude this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you real soon in our discussion boards. Bye-bye.